right. Today we're going to play a little canon game. I'm trying to think of the game that this, this, the old school game that this most closely resembles. Maybe Missile Command? Yeah, not really. Missile Command of things were coming at you. Maybe Space Invaders? I don't know. Anyhow, let's go and I'd like to show you how it works first. Then we'll talk about the stuff that is um, interesting in this application. Interesting being defined as stuff that we have not seen before. Um, my plan is to go over this over the next two days uh, in class today and on Wednesday. Depending on how far we get today, we may spend um, Wednesday altering um, the code to, to, to change the functionality for it. So it's good if you would bring your laptop to be able to um, work on it and, and make the alterations as I described. So let me go and import this. And we can get rolling. The game works like this, and this will be probably the first time. Oops. This will probably be the first time today that you'll be asked to actually play a game in class. as following. We'll have to go through this probably a couple rounds because it's time. You have your cannon. Oops. trying to fire at these blue and yellow things. One point, one touch will aim your cannon. The black thing going back and forth is your barrier. A double tap shoots the cannon. Oops. Actually, a double tap aims and shoots it. make sure I'm running the original here and not my mutated code, which I think I am. I think I'm running the original. Let me verify that.
Yeah, this is the original. All right, so take a second and play with it. Remember, one tap, shoot, uh, aims, two taps, aims and shoots. You don't have to guess countries in this game, like with the flag game. This also has audio, I believe, which I probably have the volume turned down, but I'll try turning the volume up. XML for the layout is different than what we've seen before because there really isn't much in it. There's one thing. There's a custom view that we've created. All right. Remember, again, your XML file is going to have views. Now, there's some views that are already part of you know, the Android framework. Um, table views, linear layouts, text views, image views, and so on. But you can always extend the framework by creating your own views. And that's what we do here. So the XML for this really just contains the Canon view. And that Canon view, again, isn't part of the framework. It's not as though that comes as part of the Android framework, but it's a view that we've pieced together um, as part of our uh, classes that we create. Now, the nice thing about that is, is when we extend a view, all right, we can extend the view to have both properties and methods of its own. So we can control the behavior of that view, and, and we can do all sorts of things associated with that view, and we can create attributes for that particular view. Just like we use the built-in ones, we can extend by creating a custom view, 
and then use the properties and methods there. So we've created this canon view that we're going to use. All right. I don't think there's anything fancy in the strings file, nor in the manifest. Yeah, nothing really new in the manifest. There was something in the strings file to back up. And this allows us to have a string that contains a number as part of the string. So for example, if you notice there, there's a time remaining, and we can format a number to show one decimal point seconds. So it will show that we have 10.0 seconds, 9.9, 9.8, and so on down the line. So this is a string, it's sort of a format string. It's a string that contains embedded in it uh, a number that we can format a particular way. Likewise, we have the total time there. All right, and the remaining time. All right. Let's look at our classes. And we have three classes. We have the game itself, Oops. class for the game itself. We have our canon view, which we've created, and we have a line, which we've created. Let's start looking at the line. And the line is simply a class that, you know, is, is, a, is a, a drawing of a line between two points, starting point and an ending point. One thing they do in this that I do not suggest doing is they make the attributes of this public attributes. Generally speaking, you do not want your attributes of a class to be public. Right? You want it to be private or protected. Private means only that class can access its attributes. Protected means that its class and any descendants of it, that is any subclasses of it, can access those attributes. In general, you don't want to allow the outside world to have access of the innards of a class, and the innards being the instance variables. You want to tightly control that through get and set methods. But in this case, they didn't do that. So, uh, it, you know, how do I want to say this? It, it bugs me to see that up on the screen, you know. So I have to at least mention that, generally speaking, I would prefer that you not do that. You can create, again, get and set methods just as well, and then have more control. For example, um, just things such as, you know, controlling the manner in which, you know, we set it. We, we might want to have, uh, we might not want to have, we might want to have some sort of validation in here. Well, if you allow outside classes to access the attributes directly, they can circumvent any uh, validation that you might want to put in. All right? And therefore, again, as, as a rule, you, you do not want to make those public. But they do, so we'll deal with it. We'll see how they use this class uh, in a few minutes. The canon view represents actually, you know, most of the stuff in the game. In other words, as we look, we'll see, you know, we see how many target pieces there are, how many second penalty there is if you miss, how many seconds you get added on if um, you, you hit. Booleans for whether the game is over, how much time is left, number of shots fired, the time elapsed, a line for our blocker and a line for a target. All right. So that line class that we use is both for the blocker that goes back and forth and for the target. We have
have instance variables for the cannonball. In other words, the cannonball is represented by an object. Um, in this case, it's a point object. We have the velocity of the cannonball, both in the x and y coordinates. How big the cannonball is, or how big the cannon is, how big the cannonball is, what the screen width is, and the ending position of the barrel. We'll see how all these come into play um, in a few minutes here. Finally, we have some indexes for our sound. We're going to put our, our sound effects in the sound pool that we'll be able to choose which sound we're going to play based on an index. Finally, we have things that we're going to use to draw on the screen. Our text, our cannonball, and so on down the line. So in other words, if we're talking about how this is split up, the view and all the pieces of it are part of our custom view, that canon view. There's sort of a class that goes above this, which is the sort of the game itself, which sort of runs the show, that contains the view and contains our code to process any of the gestures that are made um, on this. And let's back up and look at that one first, then we'll come back and look at more detail of the canon view. All right. We set our content view to be that main XML. So that will take the main XML and create the objects contained within it. So in effect, it will create an instance of that canon view because all our main XML contains is our custom view. We grab a pointer to that canon view because obviously the game, the code that's sort of running the show, the game, has to be able to communicate with the various methods on that view. Here's something that is new and is pretty significant. We'll probably spend a good amount of time going over this, and that is we have a gesture detector. All right. Now, associated with the Android framework are a whole set of simple gestures. All right. And in any given application, we may use or not use those gestures. All right. What some of the gestures are, these are simple gestures to tap the screen as a gesture. To double tap is a gesture. To swipe is a gesture. And finally, a long tap, where you hold down on the screen and release it as a gesture. So those are four of the simple gestures. And in this application, right now, all we're interested in is the um, two of them, the double tap and the single tap. All right? Now, just like any user interface component that we've had before, there's going to be a handler to deal with these gestures. All right? And we've seen similar things before, like on buttons there's an on click. On, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of other gestures that, that we, uh, uh, we use. I think for the most part we've used just the on click gesture. No, we, we used an on text change, uh, not gesture, but event. Um, <coughs> when we typed in values in, in uh, the tip calculator, where, it, where as we were typing in, it actually dynamically calculated the tip. So here we want code to handle the gestures. All right? And we do that by creating a new gesture detector. All right? And we're associating this class, this activity, with this new gesture listener that we're creating. We then set the volume all right, 
of our output audio. And we have our few um, pieces of code here, the only of which is is uh, really important is this on touch event. We do some things if the game is paused, we do some things if the game is destroyed, so if it's ended, relating to releasing resources. Those aren't terribly exciting. But what is terribly exciting is this on touch main, uh, or this on touch event. All right? This on touch event occurs whenever a view is touched. All right. Whenever um, our activity, rather I should say, is touched, could be touched any way. Could be touched any number of ways. Could be a single finger touch. It could be a, a double tap. It could be a two finger touch. All right. But this event fires off any time our activity is touched. Now, what we want to do, though, is for some of the activities, some of the gestures that are made, we want to aim the cannon, and in other cases, we want to shoot the cannon. So let's look at the code relating to the on-touch event. All right? Remember, that on-touch event is going to fire off whenever, the act, whenever this activity gets touched. And the first thing that we do is we get the action associated with the, with, with the touch. Remember, there can be all sorts of things, all sorts of ways that we touch this activity. Here we're getting the action associated with it. And we're seeing, again, if the user touched the screen or dragged along the screen. If it's one of those two kinds of touches, it will go and it will do this. It will call, on the cannon view, the align uh, method. All right? What that does, effectively, is if it's touched in any way, we're going to align the cannon. So to go and run this, we touch it, it aligns the cannon. We touch it, it aligns the cannon. We double tap, it aligns and shoots, but it aligned it first. If I drag, notice if I drag my finger over it, it's aligning it as I'm dragging. So, any sort of touch event is going to align the cannon. All right? It's then going to call the gesture detector to find out specifically what kind of touch event it got, how it got touched. So any kind of touch event, such as either touching the screen or dragging along the screen, is going to align the cannon. It's then going to ask the gesture detector that's associated with this to go and process this event. All right. Notice in both cases, in both cases, where we call the align cannon event and where we let the gesture detector do its thing, we're passing as an argument the event. All right? The code that's going to process that needs to know more simply than the fact that it's been touched. It needs to know, like, the position on the screen it was touched so that it can go and align the cannon head, all right? Or if it's going to shoot it, it knows it needs to know where it was touched so that it can shoot it in that direction. It's going to get that information from this event argument. This event argument, again, has all the information about what just happened, what sort of touch event happened. And again, we check the action to find out, you know, to find out like what kind of event occurred, and then we pass that event to these two methods so that we can take and find out like where on the screen it was touched or what kind of touch it was. All right. So to summarize 
up to this point. This code right here happens anytime this activity gets touched. So anytime this gets touched, we look to see how it was touched, and if it's any sort of, of um, touching the screen or dragging along the screen, we're going to go and we're going to align the cannon. And we align the cannon by calling a method on our custom cannon view. After we do that, we're going to let the gesture handler do sort of a more refined processing of it. So we're going to return, we're returning, so we're calling the gesture detectors on touch event. If we look on our gesture listener, which we're creating here, it's a simple on gesture listener, all right? There is no on touch event, which means that we're using the ancestors on touch event. And what the ancestors on touch event does is it calls the particular event relating to the kind of gesture that occurs. All right. <clears throat> so, this is one of the possible events that we could, that this gesture, gesture hand or could get thrown at it. This is the only one that we have code for. So this gesture handler doesn't handle a long touch because there's no code for a long touch. It just handles the on double tap. So, backing up a second, we touch this activity. We look to see if, it's, if, it, if we've touched it or swiped it, we're going to align the cannon, and then we're going to let the gesture detector do its thing. The gesture detector is going to look at what kind of event it was and call the appropriate on method. In our case, the only method we have is on double tap. So that method gets called. And what does that do? That actually goes and fires the cannonball. Let me pull up what some of the other um, methods that could exist in this simple gesture handler. Maybe. 